Video games. What up, dudes, and welcome back to the OVD Games Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Andrew. And once again, thank you to all our generous patrons who've kept us going for over 350 episodes. Yeah, if you're interested in becoming a patron at any level, please check out patreon.com slash Podcast. Due to the week is Theoden. Thank you, Theoden. Theoden King. I was about I... <laughs> Theoden son of... <laughs> I was about to go into a whole silly Lord of the we Rings. We did that speech. last time. Uh, Theoden's been a due to the week before, I think a few years ago, and uh, we did the whole speech. You did it from memory, I think, on the podcast. <laughs> uh, I I sort of expected you to do it again, but you got to say Theoden King. It's, uh, say. it's my favorite. Actually, I think I think it is my favorite name from Lord of the Rings. Mm. I'm trying to think if there's any others that I like. Like I know a lot of people like the like Elven names, and they're Strider, cool. Not... Man, Strider's not a fucking name. Just, I mean, it's an alias. Right, yeah, but it's more like a fucking... It literally is how Strider got his name in the video game. I'm sure, like, yeah. Weird little fun fact, like, the creator of Strider was like, ah, I read Lord of the Rings early, thought that was a cool name, so that's why I called the game Strider. But you know, it's like Aragorn being like, I'm in disguise, it's uh, Strider. <laughs> can't tell who I am now, I'm Strider. Uh <laughs> But anyway, we have a sponsor to thank. And, uh, you know, Strider would probably love this sponsor. Because Especially out in the wilds. Yeah. And in free ball fall, uh, which if it's, you know, like here, uh, means nothing because it's still 100 degrees out. But uh, you're going to want to take care of your topiary. Yes, we're talking about your balls, the intimates, the jelly beans, the your Silmarils. Your Silmarils, Jesus. <laughs> but our favorite ways to take care of them, of course, are, you know, the Performance Package 4.0 comes with everything you need to take care of your, your sweet-ass nuts, including this bag. But uh, our particular favorite products is the Lawnmower 4.0, uh, usable in the shower or on the go. And uh, I've still not been brave enough to do in the shower, but it's, it, it, it's advertised as such... It works. Uh, I I don't. I've, I've never done it under the water. Like you know, I've never been. Like I've in the shower and I've been wet. Waterfall. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not like I. Mm, I don't know. I there's something about it. It's battery operated. I'm sure it's safe. They advertise it as safe, but like uh, mm, I'm, you know, just not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna risk it. You, electrocuting your ball. I've already nared them before. I'm not gonna electrocute them too. Uh, and then of course the boxers 2.0. It doesn't matter the time of year, but summer especially and into free ball fall. Uh, these are some of the most comfortable boxers I have ever worn. They definitely saved my ass when I was recently in uh, Florida Ooh. and dealing with that humidity. Yeah, um, you went swamp ass? I did not. I prevented swamp ass. Because I had, I had my Manscaped, I had the whole bag, and I had the boxer briefs on. So I avoided that. Now I can't say the rest about the you know I can't say the same for the rest of my body, which is not you know. But I mean, and and, and Florida's weather is is Satan's humid dickhole. Um, it is, and unfortunately, right now it's getting hit by a hurricane. Yeah, uh, I, 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 which that definitely sucks. You know, stay safe, all the all the Floridians out there. Um, but my God, the humidity is awful there. But you can at least stem the tide a little bit. You know, with with some good boxer briefs by Manscaped. Yeah, and, and if you and can't keeping your side, yeah, you can use and, the ball and keeping the your again keeping your Everglades, you know, trimmed so you know it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't look like the rest of the the uninhabited parts of the state, you know, um, and and of course the 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 crop preserver, you the know, ball and, deodorant. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the, the last de defense. Is that like the you know, well, if, I mean, yeah, you've got snow. triple defense. You've got preemptive defense with the lawnmower. You've got, you know, preliminary with, you know, uh, the, the boxer briefs and whatever. And then your last defense is, is you know, your crop preserver, which smells smells real nice, goes on real good. Yeah, I, I got to say, uh, as the last thing to the ad, um, <laughs> I saw a comment on like a different YouTube video where someone was all like, oh, yeah, it's great because my, my farts smell like the forest. 
And I just got to say, and I'm not going to say any names, but like, bro, you're using it wrong. <laughs> like if, if it's changing the smell of your farts, you're putting that in the wrong place. Are you? Yeah, you're either you're either <laughs> drinking it or you're or you're, you're rubbing, or you're it, in rubbing the crack it up. Your the wrong. <laughs> now, I'm not saying I'm not saying that, you know, you can't. I'm just saying that, like, I don't I don't think that's the intended purpose. I'm not sure it's for the balls. Maybe the taint, too. But, you know, <laughs> But if you're interested in finding you out wipe yourself, a little too far and it kind of like goes up around the other, the dark side of the moon. Um, yeah. you know, uh, Look, maybe he's just creative. Uh, but if you're interested in checking out any of their products or uh, testing out whether or not it does actually make your fart smell like a forest, please head over to manscaped.com and use our code YOVG, all caps, for 20% off and free shipping worldwide. That's code YOVG, all caps, at manscaped.com, 20% off, free shipping worldwide. Your balls will thank you that's right if you want your silmarils to glisten and glow so radiantly that it causes people to stop what they're doing and weep and it's beauty head on over there now that's a confusing time too because you know it's going to take you a minute to figure out why they're weeping <laughs> you know because there's the beauty of this of your silmarils yeah look i've never dropped trow and immediately was like my balls are so good this person is crying <laughs> but if tried. i pull my dick out and somebody starts crying i'm i'm me like oh i am i'm so sorry uh but you know what i thought we were on the same page i mean it can't be any weirder than going on that et ride at, at universal also true yeah no that's <laughs> that's that ride got weird actually didn't that get changed into uh simpsons ride too no, 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 that's Back to the Future. But that's it's still the there. Future. Apparently, because Spielberg refuses to let Universal get rid of it. So you've got this weird... It, I was, We were riding it, and I'm like, it looks like a Rick and Morty parody now. Because you go Hell to, like, E.T.'s yeah. e. Homeworld with all his other weird-ass, like, you know, uh, like, fart and tits and ball monsters. <laughs> <laughs> They're a nutsack with heads. Yeah, these nutsacks with heads and tendrils and stuff. And, and, oh my. and then at the end, you get this big animatronic E.T. who looks like a big, you know... Just a big wrinkly dick, you know. He says your name at the end. <laughs> a big wrinkly dick. <laughs> he looks like he looks like a big veiny penis with eyeballs. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember how to do ET's voice, but I I remember uh, you know calling people names in ET's voice when we were kids. That was like that was like the shit. <laughs> uh, bone bone your mom. To, what was the? There was like a joke. ET bones. E. Bone bone home or something. Yeah, something bone like that. It was is the, the saying. Yeah, I know, but there was Eat there was like good. a mom joke. Eat good. Uh, <laughs> but we should do before we jump into our topic, which is successful tie-ins, uh, because a, a particularly successful tie-in just just launched. Um, there is some news that we felt like we needed to talk about real quick, and that's E 3s back baby yeah it, it would be weird for us it's, to not comment because we commented so much about it in the past um so yeah that, no, more than e3 being back i think the thing that's like super cool or uh or at least somewhat exciting i guess is uh that they're splitting up the days into business and consumer yes all around doing to make exactly things better exactly what we said they should be doing actually they're doing both suggestions yeah look i, I don't want to take total credit for this because here's the thing they could have just googled like how to save e3 and like top top suggestion ever was like split up the days <laughs> maybe <Yeah. laughs> like, like that somebody just finally used google you know what it is is they finally hired someone who was like a millennial and like just quickly googled it and was like here's some ideas <laughs> so here's the thing they <laughs> as, as we probably mentioned so they hired read pop entertainment they right, hired the pax yeah. guys they run pax new york city comic-con I forget what the other, there's like one other big convention they run. And so they basically conceded defeat. And I think ESA probably fucking realized like, we don't know what the fuck we're doing. We're bad at the this. leak of what they wanted to do pre-pandemic, the thing that caused even, even fucking Keely to go, I'm out. Like yeah. this, I don't want, I don't want no part of this. Um, they probably realized, well, you know, they probably saw the reaction of what happened when that leaked presentation got which out. what was that refresh my memory exactly so like they there was all of this this heavy emphasis on um sort of like advertisement where they wanted to make like like little pods like little like little mini st um stages all around the thing and they were right. talking about like how to get people in line to get you know um eyes on product and they were talking about like um 
they they would they god I, i'd have to dig it up exactly but like they were a lot of it was basically about how how do we get you know consumers there was wording that was really bad as really how do we get consumers to be constantly fed advertisement right yeah at i remember all times it, like you'll they'll be in line so we'll bring out the lakers and they'll play a game of nba live on this thing to demonstrate like there right. was nothing about like actually playing yeah. games right it was all about like okay how do we get people to um basically get advertised to right um, hardcore it, it was i i if i if i i wish kind of wish i had the article in front of me but anyways um it Point was, it was basically awful. yeah it was basically all about um they weren't trying to address the issues of like getting people to play games. It was more about like, how can we maximize advertising revenue to sell to, to other companies, you know, that are here rather than, than actually like getting people to play these games or whatever. Like they weren't even taught and like all the, all their ideas had like nothing to do with like game industry stuff. Again, it was like, we could have the Lakers play like it, like a basketball game and we could have, We'll have this celebrity like they were like we're gonna find out who's like who's got the um, oh you know we're, we're, what what you know DJ is popular right now we'll have him come out and and play and we'll have like advertisements right. and he'll be sponsored by this but there was a really nasty thing where the worst thing about it was you just, this you probably remember this they were saying that this generation is the most charitable generation on record or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so they, they basically said, like, this generation is more willing to donate so we can use that to make money because <laughs> we'll have them donate to, like, a charity, you know, and we'll get a cut of the profits. Um, right. Know, and, and so because they basically were saying, like, look, people donate to streams and subscribe to streams all the time. We can use that as a, as a means to get you know, a bunch of money through advertising and donating to certain charities or whatever they, they're, were they're interested in like their exact wording was just kind of like, you know, oh, like all they, just they, so gross. Yeah. They like donating. Yeah. So let's use that, you know, to our advantage for, for advertising and, and whatever. And it was just kind of like, and then I probably, that was probably the part where, where Keely was probably, I imagine was like, no, <laughs> like, no, no, thank you. No, we're not going to sit there and be like, like, okay, well, these people like to donate to, to, to what they believe is noble causes. How can we use that to make a profit? And it's like, mm. <laughs> so well, I, I, and I know that the real death knell was when Keely was all like, mm, I'm not going to be involved with this. Um, Oh, one, because I think Keeley, in a weird way, I think Keeley himself is sort of like the major competitor to E3. He is now. Yeah, well, I mean, but even even at that point, like, he was kind of like, he was sort of, he was sort of the next option for laying out uh, big announcements and stuff, right? Because of when, you know, Summer Games Fest came and shit like that. Um. Yeah, you know, but like he he's always been kind of the guy. I mean, if anything, he was more kind of like almost like a Trojan horse or or well, something. He worth he like... had a show at or he hosted a show at E3, right? He had that yes. stage all the time. So like he was part of he was like part of E3, but like he was also building his own brand, right? And his own game awards separate from ESA. Yeah, and so... Summer Games Fest was a reaction to E3 being fucking yeah. terrible. Or did. E3 was gone, officially really. dead once once uh, I I couldn't remember if Summer's Games Fest came out like before E3 officially died or as a response to E3 I thought really it was, going down. I thought it was a response to it. Um it it's might have been like, possible. A, like a small indie thing, but then it became like a big thing when right. E3 had to like not be there for COVID reasons for 2021, 2020, 2021. Um so but anyways like the thing is is like esa not 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 the brightest people and um the other thing that that was kind of because like okay esa was created as a, basically as a means to stop the government from self-regulating video game content right so you might think okay they're the good guys they're the ESA, AAA of the video video right game but esa game. was also going to bat heavily for the game industry when Hawaii and other senators wanted to crack down on loot boxes. And the ESA was at the front of, of basically backing up EA and all these other big dickheads 
um, so that they could continue to do, you know, loot, you know, loot boxes and all this other shit. So again, they're not really your friend. Their 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 interest is in the game industry, right? Um, and and when the game industry's best interest is is screwing over the consumer, ESA is not going to go on the consumer side. They're going to go on the industry side. So, right. uh, anyways, getting I think it was Reed Pop is the name of the company that does packs in New York City Comic Con. Um, yeah, again, like you said, it, it 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 was so easy. It was so obvious, right. like what needed to be done. And it's it's kind of shocking that like it was never brought up. But anyways, they. In their article, they basically said, here's the deal. We're going to have two days media only. And then there's going to be a day where it'll be both. But they're going to reopen Kentia Hall, if you remember that, the dungeon of E3. Really? And, yeah, So they, but they don't want to reopen Kentia Hall. is basically just like, you know, the, the Isle of Misfit toys for like, you know, all these other non, you know, uh, you know, small. Well, to be honest, back in the day, it was basically for indies. What were what would be indies in the early two thousands? And it was for a all lot those, of like meeting rooms. And yeah, well, and it was also used for a lot of like at the time, like Southeast Asia, Korea, stuff like that. Because basically, like the main halls were all kind of dominated by by um, Western and Japanese game publishers, mm -hmm. and then everyone else who wasn't had to, was in Kentia Hall, kind of like you know fighting for attention. Um, that's where harmonics got born for guitar hero, uh, way down wow. there. I know they're not, they're not Southeast Asia, but I'm just saying like, you know, small times, whatever. Anyways, they want to reopen Kentia hall, not for that reason, but they want to turn Kentia hall into an industry only area where like all the companies will have a whole showroom just for themselves. And like, you don't need to build a big booth or anything. It's just going to be like, just row, you know, just TVs. TVs and companies, you know, just all for media and industry. just for media and influencers, just like little stands, you know, they can just go down there media only and, and just play the stuff down there. They don't need to like, they don't need to like go to a backstage area of a, of a booth, but like, <laughs> and I'm a little surprised they wanted to do that down in Kentia hall. Cause they have the whole upstairs that they right. already used for a lot of this stuff, but you know, I'm sure they can still use that. Um, there was wording in the article from, I think it was from read pop, which I really liked where they were, they were saying like, you know, we have a lot more to announce and talk about, but like a big thing for us is with, with the upstairs, the main halls, the South and West hall is we want to, we want to give like the wording was like, we're going to have things that'll give people paying customers. there something to actually do. Right. <laughs> Those are the exact words. Like we want to give them something to actually do. Rather well, that was just... our big complaint when they, they had the public going and stuff is that there wasn't really, like they were obviously taking advantage of people's enthusiasm by not having anything worth paying the money that they were paying for. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, and, and so from what I understand, it's actually going to be a four day event, two media only. One is a mixed day. And apparently the last day is just paying customers only. Okay. Um, which is also fine. Um, again, I, I'd be fine with just, if it was just media, like influencers for two days, I'm sure we could get whatever we needed done. Um, those first Absolutely, two days, yeah, yeah like, oh, we yeah, wouldn't definitely. need to go back a third or a, definitely not even a fourth. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I think it's a great idea. Um, the only real question now is, is are they going to be able to get, you know, everyone back? Um, Microsoft is probably super glad because it's in the LA convention center again. And they're like, well, we bought Microsoft theater. Yes. They're never getting Microsoft back. Um, the, the two big questions are Sony and Nintendo. Now, Nintendo was there till sort of the end, and they do go to New York City Comic Con. They have in the past, so they, they have, have a gone, relationship with Reebok. And they do, they do, and they do have a relationship, and they go to PAX, but PAX is in their backyard. Um, but you, you, you gotta wonder if maybe like, is this this probably enough for Nintendo? Does Nintendo want to do it? And probably, I don't know. I, I feel like Nintendo's not is for some reason. I feel like it's gonna be easier to get them on board and sony sony's the one where you're going to try to have to convince them like to come back to right three but um, this is but it is still sony you know it's their backyard they're not that hard to convince i think part of the reason why they were hard the, part of the reason why they just sort of gave up on it was because they ended up being like the only show and we're probably getting you know what what was the year that they had like i don't know half a haul and it was like, we have Spider-Man. 
and yeah. Death Stranding. Uh, that is it. There was that Death Stranding like booth with like a thing in a like they have the baby in a tube. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like there was like an entire section. Yeah, that was a... seventeen or eighteen, I think. Yeah, and like I I can see why they were kind of nonplussed with like oh there's not really a lot of there's not a big crowd here or it felt like a small crowd because Sony had so much real estate. I think if they can get people jazzed generally again, there's a lot of reason for Sony to show up and it's easy for them to show up because it's their backyard. Yeah, I I would like to, you know, the, you know, theoretically I would like to see, you know, a full big ass E3 come back, you know, with oh, all yeah. of them there. Again, Microsoft won't be there, but they're going to be across the street. Yeah, um, I mean, and for people that have never been to LA Convention Center, when we say across the street, it is, it's, it still is a part of the convention center. Like, it's not like you've got a more or less part of the same blob. Yeah, I mean, it's basically it's next to where all the restaurants are. Yeah. So LA, uh, LA Convention Center has the convention center, then the Microsoft Theater, and like a ton of restaurants and bars mm -hmm. and stuff around. And the Crypto.com Arena. In between, <laughs> yeah. actually, because yeah, it's like it's, it's like convention center, crypto, which used to be Staples Center, crypto.com, where Lakers play there, all the other LA indoor teams play there, and then the Microsoft Theater. So it's like, right, which is I thought was funny. I'm like, Staples might actually outlive crypto. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh my god! Even they though Staples sold, for... to, sold to crypto, yeah, Staples might outlast it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Matt Damon's having a rough year. Um, I just because of all the harassment he's gotten for promoting crypto. Um, <clears throat> yeah, hey, no, man, I mean, it's, it's all going to be bold. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> South Park made fun of him like crazy, right? <laughs> like they just kept doing a bunch of ads with different celebrities for crypto. Um, but yeah, so there's uh, it's not like Microsoft is like not there. It's yeah, they'll, they, they'll be there for for all intents and purposes. They'll be there. I mean, and they're open to the public anyway. They were already open to the public. Yeah, right? I mean, it, it, it'll ESA E three will be kind of annoyed because they're not technically there. They're not technically getting any money out of them. Um, but whatever. Well, now that it's new people running it, though, maybe just maybe Microsoft will you know come back to the table. For I whatever. mean, all they really need to do is have like a small booth there. It's just like you want to play all our shit. It's across the street. <laughs> Come over there. We got like we got free we got free uh free energy drinks or whatever. Well, there was a year there was a year where they had a booth yeah, they for, like mixer they both. Yeah, they did. They did. And they they had that year where they gave out those pins, which is still the coolest thing. It's the coolest swag from E three period because it was collectible pins hmm. for every game you tried. You'd get a pin. So I have like yeah, a yeah, yeah, skull. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I I think that's the way they should go for all the swag actually is like then you can connect it to your lanyard so your lanyard becomes a collectible of all the games you got yeah, to like, try. see that's like a fun thing because it's like oh it's a collectible i mean you're like oh you're shilling and i'm like bro it just tells you i got to play all these games yeah it's a good thing it's a good thing to sit there and be like look at all these games i got to play versus like oh did you get to play anything i waited in line all day i played two fucking games right yeah uh i, th I think that's the way they gotta go and you know i wish they would have had a cuphead pin yeah right here. But they and again, going back to the thing they haven't said, the thing they need to do, and I think this is the most important thing. So if anyone from Read Pop ESA is listening to this podcast, they're not. But the most important thing, bring demo units. Bring lots of playable builds. Bring yeah. lots of booths. Or, or bring just bring lots of builds. Okay? Don't have 16. Don't have 8. Don't have whatever. Bring hundreds bring 100 200 300 yeah do, do what gearbox did do what yeah do what 2k that one year did with borderlands 3 where they have like 100 there they or had something. 100 units they had 100 units bring 100 units you got a big game that people are going to want to play bring 100 fucking units they almost um, never had a massive buildup of line because the line was always moving so they always had a full line but you usually got to play within 10, 15 minutes yeah. of getting it. And I get line. the idea is that logistics of it are like, oh, well, you know, what if it's not popular? What if people don't want to play it? Blah, blah, blah. And like, that looks really bad for us. And I'm like, then fucking take that to heart and make it a game people want to play. Like, I guarantee you, if there was a ton of demo stations just open all the time everywhere, people would play it because like, 
there's going to be a lot of people there who paid to get him be like, Hey, this is open. Sure. I'll play. No, wait. Great. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like, <clears throat> yes, there'll, there'll always be that game. That's kind of hogging up all, all the, all the limelight and whatever. But, um, people, people will go play your shit. Like people still play Ubisoft crap there. <laughs> so. yeah. Skull and Bones got delayed, by the way. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> delayed again. again. Uh, there's got to be a tie-in for that, right? I know we're, we're transitioning into our tie-in. How does Skull and Bones? Okay, has, how does Ubisoft sk- save Skull and Bones? I got it. You know what they need to do, Andrew? They need to make an anime. Yeah, they need. well, they need to tie it in with the next Pirates movie. <laughs> That's how they do it. But no, the uh, we should switch into the tie-in for Cyberpunk 2077 has rejuvenated interest to the point where there's now debate about Cyberpunk having always been good and the hate was blown out of proportion, which isn't true. At the time, I said, if you can no, get it that run game well, was awful at launch. Like, uh, I don't, I don't want to go into any of this. It ran like shit, history. but it was, it was a fine game. Like, I enjoyed playing it. It just ran. I like don't shit. even know if I'd say that. Okay, so, so you and I are going to be kind of on on opposite ends here on this one. Okay, um, and that's cool. I think that's good, actually. Um, but I just want to say, like, do you remember when me and Max, we, I talked about this on him stream, we got roasted because it was like 2018. It was it was the year after we went and just tried to get the business card. I actually think I still have the business card around here somewhere. Yes, I do. Um, remember, remember these schmucks? Yeah. <laughs> remember just getting this? Uh, yeah. Should I blast this guy's? I shouldn't blast no. this guy's name. Um, <laughs> just getting this business card. We just wanted the business card. That's all we wanted, and they gave us so much shit for it. Anyways, um, the year after we got this business card for Cyberpunk, um, we got to see a hands-on demonstration. I think weren't you? Were you with us or not? I um, was not. I wasn't there for the hands-on. So we we didn't go hands-on. We just went into a little theater room and watched someone play it. Yeah, I wasn't and I wasn't there for it. So we watched a hands-on demonstration or like a pre-recorded whatever demonstration of the game, eyes on, if you will. Um, and me and Max came out of that whole thing feeling like that's just that was the most bog standard esque thing we ever saw. It was this mission you go and you meet with the voodoo boys. They want you to go disrupt like this this deal going down in an abandoned mall. And you drive over to the abandoned mall and they show you two ways to where you can go, go guns out or you can go stealthily and like, you know, use the wire to hack into people's heads and whatever. Mm-hmm. And it just looked like every fucking video game ever made. It wasn't even that impressive graphically, honestly. Um, right. So when the game came out and everyone was kind of like, oh, I mean, I mean it came it, the game when the game came out, it ran way worse than the demonstration we saw, which was on some super PC. But um, I was always just kind of like, this is just the. the there's nothing special about this game. And I can't feel like the idea was so cool. Don't get me wrong. The idea of having a big giant open world cyberpunk game sounds fucking awesome. Right. But everything about the actual game that we got was just generic bog standard as video game with like a, some, some future cool tech stuff. Um, I don't know. It, it, I've, 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 since 2018, I think it was, I have basically, 2018 or 2019, I've been sort of lukewarm on this whole game. Like that that eyes on in, in, in the little theater demonstration to me was just, and then people I know were, were like, and were kind of like, no, 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 you didn't get to see the full one. There were, cause we actually got ushered out because when we were leaving this giant entourage of like the biggest fucking goons of, of of bodyguards you'd ever seen came in with all these tiny old Japanese people and I, they were all Nintendo board members. I actually recognized mm, a really? couple of them. So they were getting like a hand. So we actually kind of got rushed through ours so that they could get the full demonstration for them. Um, and everyone's saying like, oh, you didn't see the full demonstration. The full demonstration really shows. And it was kind of starting to feel like I don't know, like, like, like snake oil salesman a bit <laughs> where it's like Oh no no no! You didn't see this. Like just if you just see this thing, it's just like this goalpost keeps getting extended. Oh, there's this, it's this amazing thing that people know. Like it's all closed doors. It's all no cameras. It's da 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 da. And then the game comes out, and like and it is what it is when it comes out. Um, and I don't even. And I think that honestly, the worst part of Cyberpunk was not the game being whatever I feel the game is. The worst part of Cyberpunk was the the horror stories that came out from the people making the game. I think that was the yeah. worst part about it. Um. Well, I, I think probably the promise is the worst. It, it had such promise. And I mean, it, the show, you haven't seen the anime yet. 
Right. The anime's so, all right. It's I, I mean, I, I, I like the anime. It's not um, I wouldn't say it's like top 10 greatest anime of all time, but it's good. Uh, the anime nails more of what makes cyberpunk cyberpunk than the game did for me. Where yeah. like that body mod where like humanity sort of uh, it, the idea of humanity or what makes a human a human. You know, like the idea of like yeah. at any time, whatever you desire, you want long orangutan arms, you can have it. You want to, you know, I don't know, get whatever death fetish you have in a virtual rip, you can insert it. Uh, you want like an eight foot long dick dragging behind you like a boa constrictor between your legs. You can absolutely do that, man. Like you just go. To, so it's to the point where like human bodies no longer have value. They're like meat. That's a big part of cyberpunk is that like humanity doesn't have value because everything about it can change and be consumed. Mm. Um, and so like there's it's it's got like a semi body horror aspect to it where like nudity doesn't mean anything, um, you know, gender or any of that. So, like none of that matters in a cyberpunk world because you can buy whatever the hell you want to change whatever the hell you are. Um, and that was a big promise of cyberpunk, right? Remember all the modification you could do to your body and yeah. all the rump. And then like it comes out and you, you can do fuck all really. <laughs> like you could basically do nothing. Um, and I don't know if that's changed now. I haven't gone back and played. I think I'm going to go back and play it just to find out. Um, but the, the show does nail that it sort of nails that like obsession with improvement of the mm. human condition, that kind of thing. And like how, very little value human life has in a world like that. Um, you know, it, it really does nail that in the show. Uh, it also nails the vibe of Night City very well to the point of where, like, I saw the show and I was like, oh, I guess I do want to hop back into Night City and shit. The music in the show is a lot better than the music is in the game. I don't know if they updated that. Um, but the story to the game is like a corporate sabotage, corporate warfare type story and that is cool um it's just there's no reason to do anything outside of the main story and if the game if you don't have the game on a next gen console or you don't have the game on like a very high end pc it ran like absolute dog shit and if you did have it on a high end pc it still ran okay and you would have some weird fucking glitches like a palm tree that never leaves your sight it's just yeah. always a hundred yards ahead floating going through walls whatever uh or always like a dead body that you killed and just floats there with you forever. You get in a car, it's on your hood. You, you yeah. know, get into a house and, you know, going through walls and shit like that. Um, I never really had huge, huge problems, but I would get that like artifacts on the horizon glitch all the time. Uh, though supposedly that's gone now. So and what I still to this day, to this day, can't figure out was why they bothered with, with last gen versions at all. Um, well, that the was idea complaint. obviously being that people couldn't get a hold of a next gen system and couldn't, you know, couldn't get, you know, could, there wasn't that many high end PC right out there that could run it. So like they, they probably felt they'd be handicapped really hard on sales. If they, if they didn't have PS4, Xbox one, era games and i would argue that like the fallout from the first three months of that game were probably worse than if it was just next gen only yeah i mean i i think one of the things that i saw at the time that was a really good argument was that if your if your game can only run on top of the line it means that you built a shitty game uh especially because it didn't like cyberpunk was a good looking game when it was running properly but like it wasn't like cutting edge you know yeah boundary pushing it was gta uh with a cyberpunk twist like they didn't they didn't do anything the gta hadn't already been doing in gta 5 um i think there yeah, was a lot I, of promise I, I for that but people will say like oh that's a that's a derivative argument i'm like no but it's kind of true like uh, and, that and i think that like i i should clarify something I still think the game was fine when it came out. It's just there wasn't a lot to do outside of the main mm. story. I didn't give a shit about it. Like, they didn't have the world that, say, The Witcher did. The Witcher 3 made you want to go do side quests and DLC and stuff. Mm. Other than the main story, I really didn't give a fuck about exploring Night City because Night mm. City wasn't all that interesting. Yeah, um, and that's the takeaway I kind of got from people who were playing it when it first came out. I was like, 
the city doesn't really look that interesting to explore. And, and the thing I, right. that kills it for me, and what makes it so interesting with this 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 resurgence because of the anime, is that I think the art direction in Cyberpunk fucking sucks. Um, mm. That isn't to say like I don't think the people didn't try their damnedest and that there weren't talented people working on this game because there absolutely were and there was a lot of a lot of hard work that went into the game. I, I don't want to like. I don't want to like say that 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 didn't happen because it did, but it's a bland as fuck looking game, like art style wise, and it's a game about fucking cyberpunk, and it mostly just looks like modern day L.A. with tech on right. kind of like sprinkled on top of it, and everyone's got everyone's got fucking lines on their skin because they can pop their arms and pop their their mouths out or whatever. Like everybody's got blades in their arms that are bigger, than right? Their arm. So it's yeah. like. But like the general sort of like I'm just walking down the street kind of look to it. It it mostly looks like fucking LA does right now. Like now. Um it doesn't have this sort of like dystopian nightmare. And again, you I, there was a game that came out this year called Stray, which that nailed exactly 100% what you wanted, yeah. nailed the cyberpunk aesthetic right. and atmosphere and art and everything. And and it did it so 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 much better. Than Cyberpunk did, and it was like a, a double A budget game. Um, so uh, there's just something weird to me about like just the art, the general art direction. Like Night City is supposed to be like a central California coastal city, you know, so like Monterey or something, right? It's not supposed to be San Francisco, it's not supposed to be LA, it's supposed to be like an in between because there is like the outskirts San, on the deserts and stuff. San Frangelis, San Frangelis, right? Yeah. So I I guess you could argue that, but it's like Blade Runner itself takes place in L.A., but it's in an L.A. so fucking far removed from reality. Like it, it, it's supposed to like I don't know, and maybe maybe that's what the creator of Cyberpunk wanted. You know, maybe that was more his ideal um, was to have something a little more grounded. And I think that's probably the the nice way of describing the aesthetic of Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven is that it's more grounded. It's not this this dystopian neon drenched, you know, um, it's like this sh like tech techno nightmare version of, of Hong Kong. It's more I Blade Robot Runner instead is, of Blade right? Runner. Yeah. So, and the thing is, is like, I just don't think LA is interesting to walk around. I mean, we might have disagreements about this for the most part, but I'm like modern day LA is not really something that's, fun to walk around in or be a part of it's it's just a lot of concrete <laughs> nah if you i mean one that just sounds like you don't like cities that much but i don't i don't and that's the thing I, i'm gonna be 100 real here i'm really biased on this because i really don't like cityscapes unless they are these fucking huge like this this really dystopian nightmare of stray you right know, or or of the original blade runner kind of thing the thing about LA that makes LA interesting from an urbanist perspective, and I'm not a huge fan of cities in any, any, you know, in any way, shape, or form, but from an urbanist perspective, uh, LA is cool because it's so many cities smashed into one. Like people don't, nobody, or somebody that hasn't been to LA doesn't understand the scope of LA. And the only other city that I can describe or that I can say like stands up to that same type of sprawl is Bangkok. Hmm. Bangkok is a big fucking city and it's just like, you know, I, I haven't been to Tokyo, so I can't say that Tokyo has the same. That's oh. why I'm not mentioning Tokyo. Oh, yeah. Tokyo Tokyo's is a massive a major city. Sprawl, for sure. Um, yes. But the, the reason I say like LA is so many different cities and each neighborhood of LA has its own mm -hmm. sort of like vibe for walking around right uh koreatown for instance walking around in koreatown like koreatown is actually walkable and there is shit if you live in koreatown you can walk around koreatown and, you know go to supermarkets go to you know a park i wouldn't i wouldn't really go to a lot of parks in koreatown because they I, I don't know about now but they weren't well up kept at the time um but like i used to live near the hms bounty and the prince and uh you know i could walk into little bangladesh and i could get you know walk over to wilshire boulevard like there's a shitload of walkability and walking around koreatown was perfectly cool there was a lot of high-rise buildings it was fucking great uh culver city downtown culver is one of the prettiest areas in la and you can walk around downtown culver it's a very walkable and that's like nowhere near you know 
Koreatown. No, it's like, not. It's a 45 minute drive on a good day. Uh, walking around Third Street or downtown Santa Monica, also its own fucking place. Like, totally. Yes. yes. Walking around Beverly Hills, some of the best parks in the city are in Beverly Hills, and you can walk around to them and, you know, very pretty areas. Uh, nobody wants you there. So. <laughs> <laughs> you'll you literally if you're walking around and you don't look like you belong cops will walk up and be like hey just spotted you on that camera that overlooks this park just wanted to check in with you are you from around here no hmm <laughs> it's, it's a little weird they're very nice but that has happened to me um you know but la is just like there's a lot of pockets of places and then there's a huge amount of sprawl. It's like being in the ocean. There's a lot of coral reefs and a whole lot of fucking nothing, nothing. in between. <laughs> um, that being said, they've done a lot of improvements like downtown where Staples Center is. Speaking of E3 earlier is so different from the first time we went to E3. Oh, like yeah. there used to be nothing. Now there's a huge amount of restaurants. There's circ uh this Circle? took them like 20 years to do this, though. Yeah, they want like, to make because I remember the first. advertisements like the first couple of E3s where they were LA mm -hmm. Live's coming and this is coming and blah blah blah. It took like 20 years to get Starka there. Starka but... is now there. Uh, Hope Street that that eighth and Hope is now a, a outdoor walkable only, there's no cars allowed in it. Um, so you know, if we go to E3 this year. We can walk right over to there. It's it's less than a five minute walk, and there's all sorts of restaurants and shit there. Apparently now, no. Um, I okay. Um, but the point is, it's it's all vastly <laughs> different. And the thing about Night City, bringing it back to um to Cyberpunk, is Cyberpunk has that. There are a few spots where you can go get screenshots that look super fucking cyberpunky and cool. The problem is, there's like three. And otherwise, you can't think of anywhere worth exploring. Yeah. There's not a lot of reason like, to explore. There's that flashback sequence where you go back in time and you play as Johnny Silverhand. And it's cool as hell. Yeah, and it's cool as hell. And it looks like the, you know, the cyberpunk you thought it was going to look like. Right. And it's a little weird because you're kind of like, well, where the fuck is the rest of the game? I thought this Because it's all doors and hallways for that. No exploration in that. Uh... Yeah. All right. Uh, and the, the anime does a good job of taking you to some key like afterlife is there and like you get to see the person doing the hacking with the wires and all that shit uh but even in the anime like there's not a lot of like sprawling ex like you know how some anime will have like a lot of textural stuff mm. um a even good, even uh, huh like good anime or yeah like good anime will have a lot of like text uh, like you know there's a lot of texture to the anime, like the environments and stuff. You want to just stop and look, you know, yeah, say, Ghost Akira, in the Shell, Ghost Akira, in the Shell, Akira, Akira yeah. you know, um, I'll even say about this anime, while it isn't an ugly anime, it still does feel like pockets, like they mm -hmm. want to jump, like you're not just like roaming through Night City and look at the crazy views, like a lot of it is like little snapshots of parts of it and otherwise mm -hmm. they ignore the vast majority of night city. And I think that probably boils down to the studio doing it now. Yeah. Budget. <laughs> this kind of the studio. So studio trigger did edge runners. Studio right. trigger is kind of like everyone's current favorite anime house. And I'm going to be polite as I can about this, where I think studio trigger is a very talented studio. They put out very, you know, well done stuff. That's probably very hard to do, right? I hate Studio Trigger's animation philosophy in general, personally. <laughs> Wait, what? Well, okay, what's their philosophy then? So their philosophy is very anti-Ghibli-esque, anti where Ghibli's kind of notorious, in Miyazaki in particular, is kind of notorious for having breathing moments, where he just mm. wants to like establish a scene. Yeah, still, there is none of that inside. Right. Trigger doesn't do that. Trigger is keyframes. Poses, keyframes, poses, poses, poses. Crazy angular keyframe poses. Quo, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Will, and then we basically, we will not have any in-betweens for a lot of an episode. Or we'll do a lot of static character talking, you know, camera barely panning. And then we'll have these moments of action that are insanely well animated, insanely fluid, insanely over the top. And it'll, you know, it'll, it'll take up a tiny little sliver of an actual episode, mm -hmm. you know, and then, and then the rest of it is like filled in with these really insane poses, 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 keyframes. 
And I kind of fucking hate it because to me, it's like this. It's a very just, I guess the, the polite way of saying it, it's like a sugar rush. Um, OK, style I, yeah. of, of storytelling, of of animating, of like, again, and I kind of just fucking hate it because they're, they're famous for for animes like Kill a Kill and Premiere uh, and stuff of that ilk. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I watched two episodes of, of Kill a Kill. I fucking hated it. Um, I, I just I, I hate just the, the sort of hyperactive sugar fueled, like just, you know, coked out of their mind mindset. And I don't think they're bad at what they do. I actually think they're experts at what they do. And I think they work hard at what they do. I just have no fucking uh, interest in it. I don't like it. Um, they're, they're the ones... I don't know if you saw the Star Wars anime shorts. Yeah. And they had that fucking anime... They did a couple. And one of them was with the, the brother and sister. Like the brother who betrays the Empire and the sister who's you know, uh, yeah, they basically, fight yeah, 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 yep. That's studio trigger. That's, that's their bread and butter is okay. just doing that, that holy shit. We've got this cool fucking panning, like, you know, action shot, you know, of whatever. Um, and then a lot of it else is just sort of like, it looks cool in a screenshot kind of thing. So I don't, I don't hate it, but I do, I do think we both like those breathing moments. That's what I meant when I say like texture, Mm -hmm. You know, like those moments where you get to like feel the environment and stuff. Uh, there isn't a lot of that in cyberpunk. So you don't yeah, really get a feel You say feel that and it. it just makes all the sense to me. So I'm like, yeah, because that's yeah. your trigger. And they, they don't fucking care about, they, they, they don't care about texture work at all. Like they, they're, they're there to fucking show you, look at this cool fucking thing. Look at this cool fucking like, you know, this character's going to like fucking yeah, flip through like 30 bullets and it's going to be done at these crazy angles and it's going to like zoom in and out and it's going to look fucking amazing. And he's like... Yeah. yeah and i don't i don't hate it for what it is i just uh yeah okay that makes sense why you don't get a sense of night city at all um but they do a very good job of getting the freneticness of a cyberpunk world like think of think of how modern people um or at least i guess it's, this is anecdotal but like how you constantly feel because of social media uh some doom is coming, you know, doom scrolling yeah. or like, you're just always on to the next thing as fast as possible. Yeah. There's no, there's no time to process whatever was happening yesterday. Fuck yesterday. Yesterday's done. We got to get to the thing that's, that's ending today. Uh, they do a really good job of nailing that, that feeling just for everything in cyberpunk, which is yeah. the, the extension of, of that feeling, right? Uh, no time to mourn a loved one. No, you've got to deal with whatever's going on today. There's no time to, you know, process feelings of love. You've got to betray that person to get this done or no times to feel loyalty because who are you loyal to? You know, like there's just always this constant rolling dread in cyberpunk that they do a really great job of, uh, of nailing. And I think that's probably because there's a yeah. constant hype. And, and I haven't seen the anime. If you'll tell me to see it, there's some, some I've heard, I've heard idiotic statements. Like it's as good as bebop. No, it's not. Um, no, but they do that. I can see where they get that vibe. Uh, it has that very like influenced by the music and the music I think is done by Franz Ferdinand, which if you like that band, you're going to mm. like this show. Um, and they do a lot of that, like editing on the music. Um, you know, I yeah. could see. I, I'm sure. I'm sure for for the you know they got triggered for a reason. So it's like I'm sure for that style of anime is probably very very good. I just do not like that that style of anime. Like, um, yeah, you probably won't like the show from what you're saying. Um, I do think you should watch at least one or two episodes just to kind of kind of get the vibe because it, it does actually work as a tie into where it interests you. Like I'm going to go back. I'm going to try cyberpunk again. Yeah. And, and I think that's probably like the main crux of the thing is that like, I have never seen a game or I'm sorry, a tie in influence a game sales so much. Like I've never seen one help the other. Right. Yeah. Cause like there have been many tie in stuff. There's been halo animes there was Dante's Inferno animes, you know, there, there, that, holy shit. there's, there's anime tie-ins. There's, there's, there's like DC animated tie-ins right. to Batman stuff, to Arkham stuff. Um, none of this shit has ever done anywhere near as close to as much goodwill, good work towards the game it's based on as cyberpunk edge runners has. And mm -hmm. I'm actually very curious because again, 
Trigger's known for their style and their art style and whatever. And the game doesn't have fucking any of that. So I'm curious how people who are jumping into the game for the first time, because they were so enamored with cyberpunk edge runners, how do they feel when they actually get into the, the game proper and you just get this just really bland grounded ass fucking look to it. But. Well, that's what I'm interested in seeing because the characters in edge runners look cool as hell. Like yeah. they look weird and like the body mods and everything like that. Um, and even the way they treat like sex and nudity um, is so it, it contrasts romance to where like no one else is concerned with romance uh, and sex is so easily gotten because nobody gives a shit about their bodies in a way um, that like they it makes romance feel perverse in a yeah. way. Uh, and they do they do a well or they do a good job with that in the show. Just that doesn't exist in the game as I remember it. Now I'm wondering if they've updated to where you can get like, mm -hmm. you know, your characters to look that unique or that cool. Um, I genuinely don't remember that from when I did character building uh, the last time. So I'm going to start from scratch. I'm not going to try and continue where I was. I'm just going to like restart the game. Yeah, um, probably probably just as well. Yeah, and see where that goes. Um, I mean, and and I'm optimistic because I remember the Witcher, the Witcher three, I guess when it first came out, was, eh, 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 and then it turned into one of the. Yeah, and I've games heard that from time. from you know the the diehard CD Project Red fans who stuck around were like, "Look, you guys, Witcher three came out and it wasn't it was like Witcher three came out it was a really bad state." And I'm like, I don't remember that. Like it certainly, it probably wasn't in as good a state as Witcher Three is now. But Witcher Three did not launch as catastrophically bad as Cyberpunk did. I don't know. I I played it when it first came out and was just like, uh, fuck this thing. Like I don't understand why people <laughs> like The Witcher because I thought that's how the whole series was. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that was on stream where like someone was like, you got to try it, and I played it and I was like, this is fucking garbage. And I turned it off. And I don't usually make hard statements like that about anything someone else made because anybody that's ever had to create anything of any type of, you know, artwork or whatever knows that, like, that mm -hmm. shit hurts real bad uh, and it, nothing's easy. Um, so I try to be, like, pretty middle of the road about being like, this is a piece of shit. But it was. It sucked uh, when it first came out. And then now it's one of my favorite games ever. And I purely I went back because I had bought Someone was like, oh, you're going to want the DLC. You're going to want, and I had bought the big package thing. Yeah. And so when all the DLC was out for it, I was like, oh, okay, I'll try it again in that never ending content uh, search when you're doing streaming and stuff like that. Um, and I finally went back and played it like years after it came out. And I wasn't even streaming it. And I loved it. I played, mm -hmm. I think I put like 150 hours into it easily. Like I really genuinely the Witcher three love the Witcher three. Yeah, um, so this is a kind of interesting like comeback story because Cyberpunk's kind of basically redoing it itself, you know. Right. They're, yeah. Numbers wise, they're they just announced they're up to twenty million sales, um, which is like seven million more from the first few months when it came out. Um, they had their highest peak on Steam ever, like within the last week. Right. Even more than when it first came out. Like this this anime has done so much more for this game than than I or probably anyone could have ever anticipated. Um, and I'm curious what state the game is now. Because like you said, like Witcher, Witcher 3 came out rough. Um, but over time and that through the DLCs, uh, it, it really changed, you know, like a 180 on you. Um, and well, maybe that'll you what, happen. Maybe that'll happen with Cyberpunk. I'm going to give it 10 hours. I know that's a lot to commit to, but I figured with an RPG, 10 hours is is fair because you can put a lot of I hours. I gave Persona 5 10 hours. Yeah, I'm going to give it not 10 hours. Not back, but... And I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you if it's changed. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you if it's like drawn me in again because I think initially I had put somewhere around that amount of time into mm -hmm. it and then walked away from it. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll give it 10 hours and then give you like generally like, hey, it's worth checking out again. Yeah, if, yeah, and if I have don't. a I have a beefy enough rig to run it. I have a PS5, you know. Yeah, I, I have the tech to run Cyberpunk if if it is good. But I mean, Supposedly the thing it's is, even better optimized now, though. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, though, is like the the world they designed at the end of the day is still not the, not the the Cyberpunk I wanted. Like, I right. think even if the game is good, like it's still going to be a very 
to me, it's just going to still be a very bland looking game. Um, yeah, I don't know how much they could have changed the aesthetics, really. Um, probably not a lot, but I don't know. I, I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt again because The Witcher did such a 180. Um, I think if anything, I just hope for CD Projekt Red that they never pull that shit on their on their on their dev on the developers ever again. Like, you know, it's cool that this anime is doing so much for them, but like, I hope there was a. I still and there probably wasn't, probably wasn't, but I hope there was a lesson learned about you know how you develop video games and the process in which cyberpunk was done should never fucking be repeated. I mean, their fall from grace was so decisive and over the top that I have to imagine that yes, lessons were learned at that point. Uh, I think if they were a success and the, the fall from grace was purely, you know, social like, not yeah, monetary social, yeah, yeah you know uh but they had so there were so many returns and it was so many people had to get like i mean sony was offering full-fledged returns how many yeah. days in you know like it was such a fall from grace i think it hurt every one of their relationships both in the industry and outside of the like it hurt all of their relationships with fans and it hurt their relationships with publishers like i think yeah. they I can't see them not having takeaways. Like they learned some lessons. They had to. Otherwise, why would they fund the fucking tie-in? You know, why would they I mean that was probably that was probably decided way earlier on, but still, absolutely. yeah. Like but like they could have killed it. Yeah, they could have killed it. Yeah, they, they absolutely could have. Um, you know, other the fact that they even bothered funding the tie-in and they're still going with shit, and apparently DLC is still coming through for it. Yeah, like rather than they just killed it, buried it, and moved on to the next thing, I think that they learned they learned some lessons. They're actually, I, I don't know, this is so optimistic, but like I sort of well, think they're really trying to win people back. I do, and I do think they did. Like I don't know about CD Projekt Red, but like we saw it within the industry where Starfield got pushed to next year. And they specifically said, like, the, the people <laughs> working on the game, the developers, told their managers, this will be the next cyberpunk if you don't delay it. Right. Yeah. We and that was enough to it. scare them. And and then scare the heads of Bug Thesda and the heads of Microsoft to be like, oh no, we don't wanna we we, we don't we don't want a fucking cyberpunk. Well, on our and, hands. and this is the perfect opportunity to plug one of the thing like the favorite things we say is to vote with your wallet. Yeah. Nothing sends a message to those higher ups like, you know, Bobby Kotick probably would have changed his ways a long time ago if people would have actually boycotted COD. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Probably. Like um, Activision didn't terrified. turn didn't turn into nothing but Call of Duty. They would not have put all 10 of their of their developers on Call of Duty if people weren't buying Call of Duty. They yeah. would have moved on. They would have diversified. You know, they would have done something else. They would not have just they would not have just kept going all in on Call of Duty. Yeah. If if y'all stopped buying. I mean, I'm a little guilty of it, but like I I bought, strangely enough, I bought Vanguard. I don't know why. Because you um, hate yourself. But I didn't buy Cold War. <laughs> I didn't buy Modern Warfare. I'm not buying Modern Warfare 2. I didn't buy any call. The last Call of Duty I bought was Modern Warfare 2 or maybe Black Ops 1 or something. One I... or two. I, I think it was Black know. Ops 2, maybe. I did. So it was a long time. I, I bought Modern Warfare 2. The I new one? It, yeah, I bought Modern Warfare 2 to hop into the beta with a friend I hadn't uh, played games with in mm -hmm. a long time. And he was just kind of like, oh, I'm back on games. This is the game I own. And so I got it. Uh, and actually, if you want to know my thoughts on it, not bad. I played the beta. It's just Modern Warfare 2019.2.0. Uh, yeah, there's some pretty significant differences, I'd say, um, in terms of like movement and I'm happy sliding thing. was for a, t a few hours was nerfed, but PC people already found a way around it. Ish. Maybe, Ish. Maybe, find a, maybe, maybe they'll find a way to stop that before launch, but dolphin diving is very funny. Um, yeah. you know, I, I do think that they did a weird thing where it's like they simultaneously gave you tools to kill campers while also encouraging camping because movement is so loud that you can literally yeah. hear a person walking from across a building. 
Like you can be outside the building and hear a person walking, just not even sprinting. Oh yeah, footsteps are loud in the game. I'll give it that. They're fucking loud and gun gun sounds like reloading shit like that. That's loud too. Yeah, and they um, can't cancel reload animations this time. Yep, which I which I I think is fucking great. Oh, um, you like that, do you now? <laughs> yes, I do. Because here's the thing. You know that like addiction you have to reloading after every gunfight rather than finding out how much time to kill you have and knowing like yeah how many bullets it takes it. So in COD 4, uh knowing how many bullets it takes to kill people is one of the reasons why you could clear a room and when you knew how to like get the fuck out. Uh Max and I would talk about this all the time. And it's the reason why the M16 was so popular is not only did it drop people in three hits. Uh, but it meant that you knew how many bullets, like it meant that you knew you didn't have to reload after every gunfight yeah. necessarily. Uh, this forces you to know, you know, sort of time to kill and s- sort of get a feel for gunfight. Well, there's some guns like the Fennec is like, if like, okay, Fennec is like, it, it runs out of ammo so fast that like, if you if you kill a dude or clear a room and it hasn't auto reloaded, you might as well reload because you probably have like two bullets left. Right. Yeah, that's that's true, too. Uh, but also it's why the hurricane is I think it's the hurricane has like 50 mm-hmm. rounds or something like that. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's going to be the business. Um, but yeah, no, the uh, they give you the drill, the the drill grenade and stuff to kill campers. But so many people just want to camp because they don't want to run around. They're afraid of it. Um, you know, it also makes dead silence kind of OP, which is probably why it's not a perk. And it's a, a fucking like a um, kill streak sort of uh yeah it's a, it's a uh god what's the word that they use for it i don't know you earn it with points and then you can like pop it Point on streak, it's like a whatever. technical um but yeah no it's uh it's got problems there's definitely like problems in there but i think it fixes some of the things that i had a problem with 2019 um that used to annoy me bunny hopping yeah. still yeah, fucking everywhere, but it's not as yes. effective as it used to be. Body hopping is thing. Well, TTK is pretty high, so yeah. So we'll see. Uh, I don't know. Any last thoughts though on tie-ins? What's your favorite tie-in that ever happened, and why is it the Zelda anime or the Zelda oh. cartoon with uh, Bad Boy Link? Jesus fucking Christ! Um, God, that cartoon sucked. Um, <laughs> Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk Edge Runners could have so easily been that too, <laughs> and like the dialogue in Cyberpunk Edge Runners is uh, not great in some moments. Not like great, just, yeah, yeah. There, there, it's, some of it's like, man, and I'm not watching it in the original Japanese, and I should, uh, because apparently that makes a difference on this. But um, there's, there's some of the writing is a little bit like, mm, mm. Um, that being said. Uh, Man, the writing in the in the Zelda cartoon was, whew, ooh, it was rough. Uh, no, my favorite tie-in, well, like like film wise or show wise, would be Castlevania. Oh uh, uh, yeah, that's true. The Castlevania anime is real good. Real good. Um, was that made to sell Castlevania games though? No, because Konami because Konami's fucking gone anyway. Yeah. So, um. I would probably say not not film related, but like the Twilight Princess manga, which mm-hmm. started right before HD version came out and only just ended, went right. on for years. Um, Apparently, is very excellent. Good. Most yeah. of the mangas are okay, and they like they add stuff, but it's usually whatever. Um, the Twilight Princess manga is everything story wise the game should have been. Like it takes all the like things that were maybe maybe that was a cool nod or thing and they, they expand upon it and like they really delve they go way more into the characters Interesting. motivation and everything and the Twilight Princess manga is is everything plot wise the game should have been um, hmm. like okay. it it generally it is a genuinely like story wise a much 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 better um story than than the game even though it is based on the game with obvious liberties some liberties taken i can't think of a single tie-in that i really love i mean i guess the easy answer is to say the witcher tv show has been pretty good uh but i don't think that was made to sell games it's more honest. based you know because like castlevania and and, and probably the witcher show is like it's based on this 
on this thing. It is not, it is not meant to tie into this thing. Like Edge Runners is not, it's not like it is based on the cyberpunk video game. No, it, it's not based on that. It's not even based on the original tabletop. It's, it is a tie in for the video game. Right. It is meant to, to, to tie along, to be a part of it, go alongside it. It's not meant to, uh, is not like it's not something they do years after the fact and it's sort of just vaguely based on it like the silent hill movie or the resident evil movies or whatever right i so i would say that the uh the witcher show is based on the books and so it doesn't really count as a tie-in um do you remember this is they weren't good i guess necessarily but do you remember the pokemon comics yeah so when I was a kid and we would go to like Pokemon card tournaments and stuff or like po I would compete in the Game Boy tournaments. Um, I was not good. We're not going to pretend that I was good. But uh, they used to give out those comics, like those little like collectors comics that like were more advertisement than comic, probably. Yeah. Um, and I remember really being jazzed about getting those. Those and like there was like a uh, um, little pog type coin things for the card games that they would give out there mm. but i would say of that ilk of the pokemon tie-in ilk um probably the mewtwo card you got for going to the movie uh was one of my was one of my favorite tie-in yeah. things ever and getting mew at the first pokemon tournament i ever went to at like that roadshow tournament they did before the movie came out mm. uh i got mew from that for the um, card game or the video for the game, game? boy game for the, the video game, game. Boy game because yeah, you got for, a legitimate Mew. Yeah, I got a I got a real Mew with a serial number and everything. They give you like a little like written certificate, like, all right, you got number, blah, 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 whatever. Um <laughs> I fucking love it. I thought that was the coolest thing. I don't know why I thought and granted I was a kid, so I'm, I guess easily impressed in some ways, but I remember thinking, like, how cool is it that you can hook up, you know, your Game Boy to this and they can give you they can trade yeah. you a thing that wasn't in the game before. That's like blew my mind. I thought that was so damn cool. Now, I mean, obviously, yeah, you get DLC and it's not that fucking impressive. But <laughs> at the time, I remember it being like, I have Mew and other kids being like, what? And granted, we knew the cloning thing uh, and could do that. And so it's like all of my friends ended up having Mew too, as well, rather. Um, but God, I remember that was so fucking cool. <laughs> Yeah, then that was that was a cool thing. It sadly is like the advent of technology and the way technology is so far advanced and improved now. Like something like that is not even it's not impressive anymore. Yeah, I mean it's still a it's still kind of a fond memory, and it's still cool to go to like you know a convention and get some sort of tie in thing for the game where it's like you get a jacket or a horse armor or whatever the fuck uh, for being here. It doesn't affect anything. It's just kind of a yeah. cool. I love stuff like that. Um, but yeah, other, uh, in terms of like shows or books, uh, oh, you know what? No, that's not true. I like a lot of the Halo novels. I like, yeah. I'm not saying that they're amazing or anything like that, but there's a lot of Halo novels that I genuinely, uh, really liked. Like I like the Halo universe because of the novels more than the games. So, uh, but uh, that's actually like a cool, uh, side quest question of like tie-ins and stuff yeah. like that. Um, and I'll always, you can hit us up on Twitter with suggestions or like, uh, hit us up with your favorite tie-ins. That's a cool idea. You can find me at Funk Machine, P-H-U-N-K-M-A-C-H-I-N-E, or you can hit up Matt on his Twitter. Yeah. At, uh, uh Twitter, at, well, I guess it's twitter.com slash doom assist me. Do doom assist me. Uh, or you can hit him up on Twitch and get him to play cyberpunk before he hears my yay or nay on it. What's your good luck? Assist me doom on on the Twitch. Yeah, twitch.tv slash assist me doom. And as always, we've got some producers to thank. If you're interested in becoming a patron at any level, please check out patreon.com slash games podcast. There you can find all of our side quests as we've been doing weekly. Uh, last week was a special case. We didn't have a side quest. But generally speaking, there's a side quest, usually like a 20-minute episode, uh, of stuff that won't fill a full episode uh, I think we m recently did a game characters that canonically got laid was a request. And so we had a good time with that. Um, but our producers for this episode are Scrunami, Kuroi35, HyperViper89, Ziggy Z, and Online Persona. Thank you, dudes. And we will catch you next time. Later, dudes. <laughs>